I'm pretty close to sure that I'm going to need to replace that fan eventually. Like oh. it kind of it kind of has like a weird knocky sound sometimes. Yeah, I just did that with the one I have. It was it was you know, it wears up, right? I mean, it makes noise when it does that. Yeah. But yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was exactly like you said. It was making the little tick, 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 tick. And then it, yeah. it really got really bad. Like it got, it got really bad. And, yeah. uh, and, and so I had it on order and, and, and whatnot, right? So I, I, I go to this, I go to a meeting and I, I flip open the lid and that's when it, that's when the fans were up is when you first turn it on or first come yeah. out of sleep or whatever. And I'm like, oh, don't worry about that. It's on order. <laughs> And I did that for like three or four different meetings. <laughs> oh my god! Don't mind me. The fans on order. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't trust me. I'm in IT. Don't worry. <laughs> Coming up in this episode, the browser watched leftovers. The history of. Gnome, and why Gnome is the best desktop, and a little holiday break. Damn, we got leftovers. We had way too much browser watch last episode. Yeah, and and Thanksgiving spilled over, and here we are. We're we're and we're feasting still. Oh, yeah, we still got, yeah, we got the leftovers, and here they are. One thing we didn't talk about at all, and it was in the show notes, but we struck it out because we were like, this show is going way right. too long. We got to, we got to, we got to We go. did. We had to trim some things. Yeah, we. And we're not even going to talk about that. That's not even nope. the thing. We skipped we're over gonna... that one. <sighs> Recently, I've gotten into using the tarball of Firefox because I got, I got Gentoo compiling back here. And I'm not trying to, I, I know you can get the binary, but I'm not trying to compile all of Firefox back here. So I just right. pop on the tarball. And for Ubuntu, if you want to desnapify your life, you can grab the tarball yes, and pop can. it down in there too. Yep. But it turns out now Mozilla, even though they have a snap that's official, they have a flat pack that's official, they have a tarball that's official, they have, um, I guess the uh, the repositories in distributions are technically official. Yeah. There's now another way. There is. We have, there, there's a, an alternative, more cool way to install Firefox. Great stuff when, when you do it, yeah. Yes, but it's only right now. I don't know if it's going to expand, but right now it's for Debian-based distributions. So right. Debian and Ubuntu and... You know, Mint, Pop, all of everybody, right? Yeah, they all get yes. Zorin, you know, everybody that's based on Ubuntu and, and, and Debian. I guess rewind the clock a little bit back to right about Halloween time. Uh, Mozilla introduced the Firefox Nightly Deb. Now, this was a way that you could install a Deb version of Firefox, but it was only the Nightly version, and it didn't interest me. I'm not... I don't like to ride the lightning. I was going to say, that's a, that's a train I don't, even, I don't really want to get on. I mean, thinking about Ooh. that, updating your browser absolutely every day. Mm, yeah that's 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 daunting Ooh, that's that's yeah because you, you're close you're going to want to catch it because it's fixing the bugs that were in yesterday's possibly maybe also introducing new ones which is yes. that, that's the lightning yeah i'm, I'm not trying to ride that you know that, <laughs> no not quite that much the new development that came out of all of this was that there's a new repository to right. sit alongside the nightly you have the developer edition and my favorite, the beta edition. So I agree. you can you can subscribe to whichever channel you want and pull that in. So it was the beta edition that that really kind of I, piqued my interest. I, I think I agree with you there. It's not it's not quite riding the lightning, but you're ahead of it a little bit. And that's kind of yeah. nice. So that, you know, especially for things like the show, we can test some of those things that they're announcing that are coming out when we go to do the browser watch that um, we can be, you know, a little ahead of everybody and, and kind of have an idea of what's coming and uh, be able to talk about it intelligently, hopefully. That's, that's kind of important yeah. because um, as, as, we, as we move forward, the episodes kind of land like right after 
a Firefox release. They seem like, yeah. So, yeah. So, like, and some of these, some of the things, and again, this is something that we're just not going to cover because we don't have the time because we've got to get to the gnome history. Yeah. We we just don't have a whole lot of time to test and the, the latest- A couple of days and make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Firefox 120 had a lot of cool features that we just, uh, uh, so we'll, they'll, they'll, we'll talk about them. But we'll, we'll get there eventually, yeah. So we can get on this beta channel, mm-hmm. but it's not just the fact that you get the beta, because you could just go out and get the tarball, and as you long could. as you're okay with, you know, basically just copy pasta Firefox's instructions, it works very cool. And yeah, it, and it works well. um And it works pretty much exactly the same way that Windows and Mac OS work. It does, yep. It's 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 actually the way I'm running it here. I mean, so yes, I I just copy it off to opt, and uh, you know, then you make a desktop file, and then you're good. And you know, when you go want to update, you go into the about and and or whatever. You know, there's a couple of ways, right? You just uh, hit the you know about Firefox, and it'll start downloading, and it'll say restart to. You know, use your your new version, and uh, the way you go, just like everything else. And my my favorite thing about that is that uh, I'm really into cross platform software because I have it's the same experience that way. Yeah, exactly. And so you know, I don't have to think about oh well, I'm on Linux today, so I have to install the new Firefox this way. Mm-hmm. So it 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 is um it it's it's a thoughtless process, and you know, in in a case like that, I like to be thoughtless. But the cool thing about this, the reason that you would actually care about running the nightly if you're brave or the developer edition if you're slightly less brave or if you're the exact same amount of brave me and Dan are, you can run the beta. There's a reason that you actually want to do that. These devs, these repositories, get optimizations that the tarball and the repository the repository version, so you know you're running Linux Mint or you're running some other uh, Debian or something like that 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 packages their own Firefox. You're not getting the optimizations that Mozilla is putting into this version of Firefox. So right. here, there are four things that they specifically mark as different about the dev file that they're offering you here as opposed to any other way of getting it. So number one, you get better performance. Thanks to our advanced compiler-based optimizations, you'll get the latest updates as fast as possible because the deb is integrated into Firefox's release process, which I feel like the tarball is is going to be pretty close to that, right? Yep. I mean, it, well, as far as a not beta, but you can get a beta tarball if you want. Right? Yeah, it's not. You're not waiting on the on the distributions package to get you know, built though. Like, so in the case of Mint, right? Mint builds their own. And that takes about a day. They're pretty quick with it. Yeah. But they're not as quick. So this is, they're not instant. This will help with that. Yeah. Yeah. And then my favorite, you will get hardened binaries with all security flags enabled during compilation. So because they know the platform that they're going to be pushing this out to, they know that they can enable some of these compilation flags and they won't there won't be inconsistencies or incompatibilities and you're going to get the most hardened firefox you can get as far as at least mozilla is concerned now anybody listening to this through waterfox or something like that yeah, right, is yeah. going to be like excuse me sir i yeah. i know i know but still folks that are using actual it firefox gives you good base exactly Exactly. And I think folks that run uh, other derivative versions of Firefox can maybe take some of these security flags might, and apply yeah. them to their own if they're not already doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm not very familiar with the downstream of Firefox. And I suppose some of, the, some of them might be doing some of those flags, potentially. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're doing most, if not all. But uh, there may be a little something that that uh, that they can add to their own. I'm all right with special sauce. Yeah. Now, here's the one that I'd take maybe a little bit of issue with, but I, I haven't run Firefox this way in a long time, so I'm not positive. So they note that you can continue browsing after upgrading the package, meaning you can restart Firefox at your convenience to get the latest version. Now, 
The only time I've ever had this issue is when I've apt upgraded and then Firefox at some point decides to just say something to the effect of, oh, oops, we oopsie doodle. We oh, Yeah, we can't no, get no. there. You need to restart your browser. Yeah, we super duper crashed. And now you got to. And I really just dislike that friendly language that everybody is doing mm. nowadays. Microsoft is the worst offender. But everybody just, whoopsie baby. Oh, no. I yeah. dropped all. Oh, oops. Ow, how, wow. How about it's broken. You need to restart now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I like, uh, you know, I got to give props to to Google at least because they're, oh, snap. And it's, you know, mm. it's somewhere in the middle, I guess. I don't know. I guess so. But using the repository versions, that that's the only time I've ever run into this. But they're saying that using their repository, you won't run into this. So I'm assuming. I don't know why, but I don't know. But I'll, I'll try anything, you know. I mean, that sounds good. Yeah, because I don't think I've run into it with the flat pack. I know I haven't run into it with the tarball because it it updates like everybody else, and it's just like it restarts. Yeah, yeah. excuse me, sir. Can we restart you? Or yep. and, yeah. and, or you just close the browser? And it's like there's actually a button. Guess what, man? You closed it. We're updating, and mm -hmm. and that's the perfect time to do it. I love that it does it that way. That's why I kind of like the cross platform feel of it. Okay, yeah. so we're really going to have to dive into this and figure out whether or not that's... Well, I think how, I'm, how... I'm, I'm switching now. Like, I just switched to this because I was uh, annoyed, and it's a minor annoyance, right? The Plasma browser integration stuff, um, okay. so that you can start and stop your, your YouTube videos. Oh, um, yeah. But it's not just that. Like, then I can do it with KDE Connect, so then I can do it with my phone. Oh, that's right. You were so, talking about that. So that's, okay. that was, it's a super duper small gripe, to be honest. But is it though remote I, control? I don't do it a lot, but when I do it, I like it. So, I mean, you know, it's a convenience thing. It's a first world problem. No, convenience is top of the heap, man. We're we're talking we're we're talking Firefox has like a 2% something share or whatever. It's the convenience factor that yeah. isn't, Converting yeah, people. No. Obviously, there's a whole Chrome monopoly thing going on as well. I mean, the you problem know, true, but... is there like the snaps or the flat packs. Neither one of those will work with the integration right. because it's confined. And that's fine. Like, I get that. And that's great. I really, I'm appreciative of that confinement for the most yeah. part. This is one of those that I wish I, there was a way to get the portal working there. The tarball. So, yeah, so I did. That's what I did. I ran the tarball, <laughs> yep, and I'm happy yep. with that. But um, I really think, you know, we talked about for the show, I'd like to actually go the beta route, and what yeah. better time than to go with this? And maybe, I mean, technically, I can install them both alongside, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, Well, and, and it's not just official. It's official with flavor. Yeah, from from the place, yeah. Yeah, optimizations. I mean, yes, yes. This is the Firefox I think I want to run too. I'm, I'm curious. At the end of this month, are they gonna announce the stable version of this? Because that's that's for the rest of the or or ESR. What about ESR? Ooh, well, I, some people mm, need that though for different compatibility true. things, right? Especially in enterprise and whatnot. Um, okay, you know, you might need to, you know, have a have a stable thing. And uh, maybe I don't know. Okay, all right, I'll give that to you. ESR it's, is important to some people. Yeah, hey, it's it's <laughs> it's good enough. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. So I'm hoping. So we got the nightly, we got the developer branch, we got the the beta branch. Maybe there'll be a stable. Maybe then there'll also be an ESR, and that'll cover all the bases. That'll be all of them. There's nothing. That, there's nothing else. <laughs> those are the versions. Yeah. Well, that'll be really cool. I like the yep. optimizations. That's that. That's why it convinced me. Hey, you can watch our faces on YouTube. You can subscribe there and, you know, ding the little bell thing and then get the notifications and all that jazz. Um, so, you know, you get this right here. This is great. And I might even remember to put the little animation that goes right here when you say that. Probably wherever, not. Wherever that thing is. Anyway. You can laugh at me when it doesn't. Something somewhere. Up. I don't know. Right here. <laughs> 
Anyway, the other thing is if you just want to catch those little history sessions that we do, um, you can do that right over on Tilvids and, uh, you know, support them. And just like, you know, you support us. They're, they're a great platform. I really love uh, Tilvids and I'm, I'm glad they, they, they sponsor our, our episodes. I, I, I feel like PeerTube is a, is a great platform and they're a good steward of that. So, I mean, very, very appreciative. Yeah, and they're and they're a bit insular too. So I mean, you you yeah. kind of have to you have to go there. You have to do you to do. get it. Yep. So if you haven't gone to Tilvis, there's a lot of other. I mean, Linux Experiment and Edutain- uh, Edutainment, they call it. That's, yeah, and yep. Veronica explains a bunch mm-hmm. of other cool stuff there too. So I mean, if you're looking for that kind of thing in a very in a, in a more free, whatever. But we're there too. And, and it's the Fediverse. Hello, that's pretty awesome. So if you want to subscribe to it in your Mastodon feed, you can do that. Like it's totally. <gasps> Do that, right? That's and my then, favorite thing. And then you know when every episode it, it drops, and so that's that's a nifty thing, I think. Um, yeah, think about that. Like you can't do that on X or Zitter or Twitter or whatever you're calling it. Can't do that yeah. over there. You know, if you if you, ultimately if you love what you hear and see on the show, uh, make sure to support us over on Patreon. You get some great perks. Uh, you get to join, uh, you know, a patrons only Discord channel. You get uh, you get to be. Uh, you know, on on our Lemmy instance, if you want to, just make sure to you yeah. know ring us up and let us know that you're you're looking into that. I saw you, LQ Larry. I got you. You we got you, Larry. Now. Yeah, sorry it took so long. <laughs> I I don't know what I was Whoops. doing. I missed it. Uh, listen, we just weren't looking at the little clipboard icon. That's that's what it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, I Whoops. know. And so, you know, there's there's some great stuff. Plus, you get episodes early, and you get high quality episodes, and all that good stuff. Mm. So. Mm-mm-mm. so we appreciate you supporting us, so we give back. That's how that works. And thank you. And thank you. In our previous desktop delves, we've meandered through the inception and adoption of the common desktop environment, which wouldn't have been possible without the technological bits that preceded it, like Unix, of course, but also Motif and X. But disagreements, licensing, and stagnation toward the end of its Unix reign marred the project such that it eventually took a backseat to newer and more open desktops like the desktop we covered next, XFCE. Now, XFCE made its mark taking inspiration from CDE and dug in hard with the idea of modularity. Every piece does its job, but integrates into other pieces of the desktop rather seamlessly. Everything was optional even the options. But while its licensing wasn't quite as open as most distributions would have liked, earlier in its life, XForms and the inherited licensing was dropped in favor of GTK and the GPL. This pleased most distributions enough that they eventually included XFCE, but the time it took to ease tensions and include it allowed the other two big names in the desktop space to get a real head start. KDE The first of two early desktops that we haven't covered yet was officially created in late 1996 and saw its 1.0 release in 1998. But we'll save that drama for another time. For this little journey, let's focus on the GNOME desktop project. Yeah, you heard that right. And indeed, GNOME, spelled with all capital letters, was an acronym. It stood for the GNU Network Object Model Environment, at least after a little bit. The original idea, as proposed by Miguel de Icaza, was to develop a free set of applications and tools to succeed CDE and to compete against its ever so slightly older free software sibling, KDE. Why not join forces with KDE instead, one might ask? It's philosophical, of course. You see, like XFCE basing on XForms, KDE was based on the QT, or Qt, toolkit by Trolltech, which at the time was viewed ambiguously. The Free Software Foundation, authoring entity of the GNU General Public License, yes, the same GNU, viewed QT as not compatible with the definition of free software and the FSF was most assuredly a force to be reckoned with at the time. This stance was ironclad, 
leading many to believe that KDE was doomed from the start. At this early stage of desktop development in general, this made a lot of sense. An integral piece of free, as in freedom, desktop was non-free? Unacceptable. With that understanding, Miguel de Casa forged ahead, inviting any and all to join the project and its mailing lists. On August 15, 1997, he wrote in his inaugural GNOME email. We want the applications to have a common look and feel, and to share as many visual elements and UI concepts as possible. We want to use the GTK toolkit as our toolkit for writing the applications. We want to encourage people to contribute code and to test the code so that the software will compile out of the box by using GNU's tools for automatic source configuration. Degasa also noted that the G in GNOME wasn't just for show. As most GNU software, GNOME application code will be released under the GNU GPL. GNOME specific libraries will be released under the terms of the GNU LGPL. While there are references to GNOME 0.12 and certainly other development releases and snapshots, the first official release announced on the mailing list was GNOME 0.13 on March 10, 1998. Miguel de Casa noted, to help people get started with GNOME, we are making a development snapshot of the GNOME source code. It is important to remind that this is a development snapshot. I am doing this just to get people in sync with what is going on with the GNOME hackers. Most developers are now using GNOME CBS for their day-to-day -day work, so we have been quiet about what is actually going on. A pair of release announcements noting that GNOME 0.20 and 0.25, curiously named Drooling Macaque, were out, came and went. By September, a little over a year after GNOME's original announcement, GNOME 0.30 was released and brought together all of the ideas conjured up so far by the desktop hackers under the GNOME umbrella. By late 1998, KDE hackers were beginning to grow disillusioned by Trolltech's insistence on the proprietary licensing model for Qt. And while Trolltech had promised some easing of proprietariness, no such substantial change actually happened. While both the GNOME and KDE projects had their development ups and downs at the time, as well as interpersonal infighting and shots across project lines, Red Hat Linux was sitting back and taking notes, and maybe lending a hand with their advanced development lab's arm. It turns out that the decision by Degasa to adopt a fully free license was quite likely one of the biggest boons to GNOME adoption. But of course, a final 36-hour rush to fix bugs and make it look cool with a new theming system before a presentation of the desktop to Red Hat didn't hurt. On March 3, 1999, GNOME 1.0 was debuted at the Linux World Conference in San Jose, California, with the backing of the FSF and Red Hat. And while there were plenty of bugs, crashes, and inconsistencies, GNOME had proven itself a capable desktop running on Linux, BSDs, and Unixes. It had a bottom panel, reminiscent of CDE, but also taking cues from other systems like Next and Windows. The very next month, GNOME was released with Red Hat Linux 6.0 as their default desktop. With things looking like they were really picking up steam, Matthew Lacage organized a gathering of GNOME developers and users to be held in Paris in March of 2000. It was called GWADEC, or the GNOME Users and Developers European Conference, and had been held every year since. It allows developers to collaborate in ways not quite possible on a mailing list. A couple months later in May, GNOME 1.2, codenamed Bongo, was released with an impressive list of fixes, but an even more impressive list of adopters. Debian 2.2, Potato, included GNOME 
as well as Turbo Linux, Mandrake, Caldera, and SUSE. The GNOME.org website was also given a facelift for the release. In August, at the Linux World Expo, the GNOME Foundation was announced following up the 1.0 release from the previous year, which was followed up by even more adoption news. HP's HPUX and Sun's Solaris would be using GNOME as their default desktops in the releases to come in early next year. The previously announced foundation would be formally founded on March 5, 2001. The very next month, GNOME 1.4, codenamed Tranquility, was released. And up until this point, GNOME Midnight Commander was the file manager in GNOME, ported from Dacos's original Midnight Commander released in 1994. It had a rocky and bug-filled road since early GNOME, but was eventually scrapped for the newer, more stable Nautilus, contributed by Andy Hertzfield and his Easel software development company. If Nautilus doesn't ring any bells, maybe GNOME Files will. Files still has its roots firmly planted at this point in time. 1.4 also came with the Sawfish window manager and five different clocks. Since up until now, the developers took an add everything you can approach. But this ultimately wouldn't be feasible. GNOME 1.4 would be the longest lived release of any release to date at 14 months. But that longevity was a direct result of the work being shifted from the 1. branch to a new major version, 2.0 released on June 26, 2002. Things certainly changed in GNOME in this release, and, and while there was always debate on the mailing lists and in other places, one thing became clear, and has stayed true to this day. Any new major interface changes will bring plenty of disappointment to some. 2.0 certainly had changes, with its site set squarely on accessibility, design, and usability using research by Sun Microsystems and a later push by Havoc Pennington, lots of things got a facelift. All of that on top of the monumental task of porting everything over from the original GTK to GTK2. The idea had been around for a little while, especially with the influence of Red Hat on the project, but over the next two releases, a cadence would be set. 2.2 released on February 5th, 2003, would be the last non-time-based release. It brought improved theming and icon themes along with the usual slew of bug fixes. 2.4 would change the way GNOME released forever. It landed on September 10th, 2003, and would begin a cycle of six-month releases that is still being targeted now. The idea is to ship software on a predictable schedule so that enterprises, distributions, users, and everybody in between would know when to expect changes and begin forecasting the work needed to implement things. This predictability would turn out to be another huge boon to GNOME adoption. This year was also the beginning of a trend where the interface would try to only present preferences to the user rather than settings. The difference being, preferences couldn't break your system. For instance, a wallpaper or color scheme, while settings, on the other hand, might. In 2004, GNOME version 2.6 and 2.8 were released, and they brought automatic USB device detection, network resource detection, evolution, the email client, and remote desktop in the form of VNC built right in. 2.8 also brought in the most iconic visual representation of what GNOME 2 really felt like, with a top panel that contained a clock, launchers and menus, and a bottom panel that had the workspace switcher and the running applications list across the bottom. It also vastly improved Wi-Fi, suspend and resume, and overall power management. It also used a new theme, Glider. Another big milestone for the project was Ubuntu coming onto the scene and selecting GNOME 2.8 to include in their very first release, Warty Warthog, in October. 
further cementing GNOME as a major player in the Linux scene. Ubuntu would continue to use GNOME on the desktop by default for the next six years. The rise and success of Ubuntu was covered a few episodes back. Over the next few years, GNOME kept its six-month release pace. In 2005, 2.10 improved Nautilus and made video playback and CD ripping easy with Totem and Sound Juicer. 2.12 introduced the clear looks theme that became iconic across the desktop. In 2006, 2.14 made huge bounds in performance in GNOME Terminal, beating out the slimmer Xterm by more than four times the on screen printing speed and brought searching to Nautilus. 2.16 brought webcam functionality, the Tango icon set, and style guidelines, as well as the ever popular, if not a little crashy, wobbly windows. In 2007, 2.18 really shows that GNOME has hit their stride, looking prettier every release and bringing in things like vertical font layouts for some languages and a note-taking app for the desktop. 2.20, brought improvements to Nautilus, Evolution, and many other small tweaks. 2.22 and 2.24 in 2008 brought the Cheese webcam application, Empathy based on the telepathy framework for instant messaging, and tabs within Nautilus. This is also about the time that GNOME 3 planning and development came to the forefront. And this showed in the smaller number of new features this year and in the two ahead. 2.26 and 2.28 in 2009 brought better file sharing, fingerprint reader support, and better Bluetooth support. Up to this point, GNOME had been a GNU project, hence the intentional pronunciation of the G at the beginning. But late in the year, Richard Stallman of the FSF noted that free software, as a focus, had been eroding over time and wrote to the GNOME mailing list. GNOME is part of the GNU project, and it ought to support the free software movement. The most minimal support for the free software movement is to refrain from going directly against it. That is, to avoid presenting proprietary software as legitimate. Over the next few years, heads would butt, and requests to remove all references to GNU were made internally and to the GNU project. Requests were made to remove GNOME from the list of approved projects. It had been noted many times between then and now that GNOME, or GNOME, was no longer an acronym. GNOME stands for GNOME nowadays. Finally, for the 2.0 series, 2.30 and 2.32 in 2010 brought split view in Nautilus better PDF support in events, and a time tracker applet. But speaking of GNOME 3 planning, many companies and groups were involved, including Red Hat, SUS, and Canonical, with Canonical being the only holdout by dropping GNOME altogether for its desktop and shifting to their already-in-development Unity. Mark Shuttleworth said at the time, we are part of the GNOME shell design discussion. We put forward our views, and they were not embraced by the designers. We took a divergent view from the GNOME shell folks on key design issues, for example, how application menus should appear on the system, how one should search to find applications, and how one's favorite applications should be presented. Ubuntu would later release with Unity, not GNOME in April of the following year. This would eventually spawn an Ubuntu GNOME flavor to carry on the GNOME legacy within Ubuntu. With GNOME 3 on the horizon, groups were split, obviously. Some wanted more of the same, as we noted before. Any new major interface changes will bring plenty of disappointment. At least in the case of GNOME, this was looking more and more true but some wanted radical change. And as far as any desktop in existence goes, that's exactly what we got. Gnome removed the bottom panel in favor of a hidden dock exposed with the super key. Desktop icons were no longer a thing and the minimize and maximize buttons were removed from the interfaces of apps. But in return, a global search 
window grouping, and smarter notifications. The release of GNOME 3 on April 6, 2011 sent shockwaves through the Linux using Populous. With GNOME as a front-runner desktop, there was a mix of jubilation on the development side and great consternation on the user side. While it had happened before, the reputation of GNOME removing features truly took hold here, as many features that users were used to had vanished, and the new activities paradigm had prevailed. John McCann, a shell designer, said, We've taken a pretty different approach in the GNOME 3 design that focuses on desired experience and lets the interface design follow from that. With any luck, you will feel more focused, aware, effective, capable, respected, delighted, and at ease. However, that sentiment was not shared among even the biggest names in the industry. Linus Torvalds quipped, In GNOME 3, the developers have apparently decided that it's too complicated to actually do real work on your desktop, and have decided to make it really annoying to do. I'm using XFCE. I think it's a step down from GNOME 2, but it's a huge step up from GNOME 3. Prior to the release and quickly after, many users had abandoned GNOME for other established projects, but also took it upon themselves to create forks. The Cinnamon desktop was one of the first on the scene in April, utilizing a GNOME 3 base while trying to recover the old desktop paradigm but didn't have a real release ready until 2013. The Mate desktop, however, based on the GNOME 2 codebase, was first released in late 2011. However, as we've seen many times in history, Fedora was the very first distribution to adopt GNOME 3 as a default in version 15 the very next month in May. GNOME 3.2 began the long journey of listening to user feedback and implementing what the GNOME team deemed workable. The online accounts applications also appeared here. In 2012, GNOME 3.4 and 3.6 brought facelifts to a lot of internal GNOME applications and introduced the application menu, which allowed whole application options to be selected rather than things that one might find in an edit or preferences menu, blurring the line between the Windows and older Linux-style configurations and a macOS-style global toolbar. 2013 brought with it a slight reversal in GNOME 3.8 and 3.10. For those that wanted a GNOME 2-like experience but didn't mind GNOME enough to abandon it in the past two years, there was GNOME Classic. It returned the traditional GNOME 2 layout, but with GNOME 3 and GTK3 technologies. These releases also brought in another controversial, but at the time, good feature. GNOME Extensions. It would allow users and developers to bring in new features to GNOME without needing to patch GNOME itself. This system would prove to be a roller coaster of emotion. And if GNOME 3 wasn't already controversial enough, 3.10 began the adoption of Wayland and related technologies. It also introduced GNOME software and many of the usual apps we see today like music, photos, and maps. Things were really returning to normal, and even Linus Torvalds, originally critical, returned to using GNOME for his day-to-day -day work, but noted that they have extensions now that are still much too hard to find. But with extensions, you can make your desktop look almost as good as it used to look two years ago. The next few versions of GNOME struck a consistent tone of listening to feedback and implementing what the developers deemed as the good stuff and generally improving overall. Extensions would break version after version, giving GNOME yet another reputation with which to grapple. Notably, 3.16 brought the notification system in the top panel as we know it today. 3.18 brought the Linux vendor firmware service integration. 3.20 simplified the update process within GNOME software. And 3.22 introduced XDG apps, or as we know them now, flat packs to the desktop. Curiously, though, during 2014, 
Groupon, the couponing company, decided that they would make a tablet and name it Gnome. Over the course of the year, Groupon tried to strong arm the Gnome Foundation out of their name. After making a call to the community, the Gnome Foundation managed to rack up over $100,000 for legal fees. And the backlash for Groupon was swift. In November, they dropped their lawsuit and changed the name of their hardware. Back to Gnome, it had its two usual releases in 2017 with 3.24 bringing in the night light for late night screen time and 3.26 improved search. In October, in a seismic sea change, Ubuntu drops their attempts at Unity, but not their display server Mir, and returns to using GNOME, bringing the spin-off flavor Ubuntu GNOME back into the fold. However, not without a few major tweaks to the desktop via extensions. Over the next two years, the desktop was further improved. 3.28 allowed starring or favoriting documents within Nautilus, and 3.30 focused on slimming down resource usage and new apps like Podcast. In 2019, 3.32 brought fractional scaling support, and 3.34 allowed app grouping in the application overview. Still in 2019, the GNOME Foundation found itself again the target of litigation. This time, from Rothschild Patent Imaging, for violating one of its patents it had acquired years prior. RPI had up until this point earned the patent troll title. The software in question was Shotwell, because it could import and organize pictures. The Gnome Foundation was again able to raise over $100,000 to defend itself, but ultimately settled with RPI to secure a license to continue with Shotwell. However, in the following years, RPI was stripped of its patent rights, but left in its wake plenty of damage. The next year saw even more improvement with 3.36, embracing extensions more by dedicating an application to manage them and 3.38 focused on onboarding with a new welcome tour and redesigning some apps like Screenshot and Sound Recorder. Now, the first release of 2021 would have normally been something like 3.40, or maybe a 4. something. But Gnome decided to go a different route. Dropping the major version number, 3 in this case, altogether was the ultimate play, leaving only the 40. This also began the long process of porting all GNOME applications to GTK4. It, once again, caused controversy by redesigning the activities overview. But as far as comparison goes, this was likely the mildest controversy GNOME ever set foot in. It also introduced new power modes for power consumption. GNOME 41 improved multitasking by adding options to configure the hot corner, screen edges, and workspace. GNOME 42 in 2022 brings with it a global dark mode setting that applies to all applications that support libedweta. It also introduced a new terminal named console. Speaking of libedweta, this brings yet another controversy. Libidweta is meant to homogenize the desktop experience so that things look and feel the same across all apps that use GNOME and is, in part, a result of dissatisfaction from the developer community because themed apps can cause issues and, in turn, bug reports. The move to Libidweta comes at the cost of being unable to use the themes that users were used to prior. A good step for GNOME and GNOME developers but a bad step for things being how they used to be. Following that up, GNOME 43 brought improvements to the quick settings dropdown. It added a screenshot button, a sound device selector, and the dark light mode UI selector. GNOME 44 in 2023 
streamlines the settings and software apps, and redesigns the accessibility settings and adds things like over-amplification that used to only be available through apps like Pavu Control. And for our final release of this history, GNOME 45. It brings in a revamped activities button that doubles as a workspace indicator and a camera usage indicator in the panel to note when a camera is being used. Additionally, changes were made to the back end of extensions that broke, well, all of them. But the devs promised that this time should be the last time, or at least make maintaining extensions easier in the future. We've all heard that one before. But it's looking like this one might turn out to be true. You can catch all the great topics as they unfold on our Lemmy, our subreddit, or our news channel on Discord. And Leo, you know how you get there? It's lus.sh slash Lemmy. Or Ed, that's so short. What? Reddit or Discord. Like, you can get there with a little shorthand. That's how you get there. It's so short. Don't forget, we've got Mastodon, Telegram, Matrix, Twitch, and Twitter. All of those mm. things, too. And you can reach out to us at any of those spaces. Um, some of them are on the Fediverse and some of them are not. But that's okay. We're, we're everywhere. We spread ourselves a little thin. But man, if the comments that come in from all those different places don't always end up in the show. I... Yeah, we've got some brewing for the next one. Um, we, we've had some, we've had some back and forth in, in Matrix and, you know, via our last live stream on Twitch and stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, that'll be great. Like, we'll get to explore that just a little bit more and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, put, put a cap on some of that and uh, explain ourselves a little bit. The controversy drives the clicks. So I mm -hmm. guess we we're just an Ubuntu podcast now. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, we're 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 bringing it, so that's cool. Um, and it like we we always love, you know, the feedback and whatnot. So please, 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 that's what we do this for. We do it for you. So yep. you know, give us give us the feedback. We'll talk about it. The conversation that comes in is always something that I absolutely love diving into because mm -hmm. one one thing that you can't do is lose touch. And that, that goes for pretty much everything. But I mean, this is a Linux podcast. So as far as Linux goes, you can't lose touch. I think, you know, you dive too far into Gen 2, you lose touch with everybody else. You dive yeah. too far into Ubuntu and you lose touch with, um, you know, people that don't use Gnome. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the key to it is to just keep your ear to the ground, to talk to people that don't use the same stuff that you use. And you'll always have something to think about and always be able to question yourself on is it is this the right software is that the right stance to have is this and it's endlessly interesting to me to question my own motivations my own thoughts and um you know at least in the past couple of in the past episode and a couple of live streams uh bgt has been Mm -hmm. keeping me on the on my toes yeah. as far as all of that goes. So um yeah, I, I enjoy the challenge. Yeah. I, I enjoy the challenge. And yeah, it, yeah, just as you say, keep it coming, keep it going. And uh yeah, I might change my my stance on some well, of this stuff. Well, that's Maybe. just it. I I'd like to think that we're pretty open-minded and stand a reason and if you present right. present a good enough case, then uh there's probably some merit and we'll, we'll, we might change our mind and I'm good with that as long as uh, everybody else does the same and uh you know when we present some things you you give a listen and if if we can sway you one way or the other, that's that's cool. That's what it's all about. We swayed Daniel a little bit on we the did. last Ubuntu session, so we maybe, did. maybe. I so really, really enjoy it, that it. we can do that back and forth. So, Dan, you've been using GNOME. How dare you? Um, you're a you're a cute guy, and I and I know I, know. I said QT. I said QT in the history, and I generally just say QT, um, but I looked it up. Apparently, you can do either. You can do either. Yeah. It it is. I mean, it's the company. It's acceptable. The company name was Troll Tech, so of course I'm going to choose the one that nobody uses. I mean, just like GIF 
is the correct pronunciation of that word of animated images that we share on the internet. It is GIF. Yes, like the peanut butter. All right, here's the part where you're really right in. Because giraffe. <laughs> uh, you know, I guess, like, maybe GIFs could be called GIFs. I'm not sure. The, not, not that they could be. They are. So, you know, some people think that. Anyway, um, that's okay if you do. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to judge. You said open-minded less than a minute ago. Hey, I'm so open-minded. I used <laughs> gnome for an entire month. Now wait a minute. I've I've used it before. It's not that. You're gnome-minded. That's what. I, I, that's I, what it I'm is. not gnome-minded, and that's part of my frustration, I guess. And I, we might as well start off with that, right? So, yeah. uh, Fedora had 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 a new release, and it came out with a new gnome 45. So I'm like. What better thing to do than try this out because that's what we're doing. So I think my gripes. When, are... when does when does Fedora not have a new release, man? Every every six months. And and, and you could you could say that my gripes are with Fedora, but I don't think so because Fedora keeps uh, their version that they release very close to what GNOME is. They have they yeah. do have an extension. It really only does like the little watermark thing down on the desktop. So I wouldn't call it you know revolutionary as far as what they change it wasn't the watermark that that you know ruined i actually the left that on i don't care about that right <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah yeah so i you know so going back to that though they don't install the extension manager like you still like even though they have the extension installed and it's there there's no way to t toggle it on and off without installing extension manager right and that's the first thing I do. Come on, man. It's it's not it shouldn't be second class citizen anymore. I feel like it's promoted enough by the developers and whatnot. And if you you're shipping an extension, you should be able to manage it. Gnome came up with it yeah. to deal with the fact that in what was it, three dot eight or something like that. But that extension the newer version is even better. Like so it used to be if if you wanted those things, you had to go out to the website and like install them from the website. You don't have to do that anymore. The the extension manager has all those things like right there at your fingertips. That's so cool, man. And it is nice. I like it's that. a good app. Like I don't know why you wouldn't want to promote it and ship it. Like it it's I you know I mean especially if you're 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 shipping an extension they don't want you fiddling with it they don't it's they... no it's a conspiracy Fedora doesn't want you taking off the watermark that's what well, it is and I don't mind that one really seriously <laughs> I mean fine you want to promote your thing that's cool it really doesn't hurt anything I will say in the earlier versions of GNOME though and earlier versions of Fedora if I turned off the and this is why I still do it today. I don't. I, I could care less about it now, but I still do it to this day because versions ago, if I turned off the watermark extension and then all extensions, like the extensions app, I turned off the extension at the top mm -hmm. where no extensions could be used. That would in turn improve performance right. in GNOME overall, and it just solidified my no extensions philosophy just get rid of them all let me do a base gnome experience and i'll get on with that i'll figure it out and i think the i think the base gnome experience is pretty good it, it isn't bad there's a few things that i do like to add but that's neither here nor there i i just really feel like the extension should get integrated into the settings like uh, you know all of the other settings and just be there available yeah um you mean it's neither here nor Ubuntu? Because those are the extensions I like. <laughs> well, yeah. So I guess that's the thing. I do have a bit of a preference. If I'm going to use GNOME, I really like the extensions that Ubuntu ships with, minus maybe the desktop icons. I can take or leave that. I don't really care. Um, but I really yeah. like the I, li I like the app indicators, and I like the 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 side panel, uh, you know, dock, and that stuff. I'm really good with. I like it. It's comfortable. Those work really well. The app indicators are almost a must-have for me. I just I don't know how I'd operate well without Telegram and Discord and stuff, yeah. notifications and being it's able to chat apps. like close those. That's what they are. Yeah. And I know like so I haven't tested this and I really should have. Somebody said that in the new uh, quick settings thing, there's a there's a place for 
some of those, but not all of them appear. I think Discord is one that does appear. It does. Uh, okay. And it's kind of weird, though. It's not the same. Nope. Okay, so what happens is, like, like you, you close Discord with the X button, but mm-hmm. on every platform except GNOME, it, you know, would push it to the application tray. Right, yeah, whatever, like minimized that may almost, be. right? Right. Yeah. In GNOME, you have to open up the quick settings thing, and down at the bottom, it's like, hey, man, uh, Discord's still running. You can kill it from here, or you could just let it kind of do its own thing. And I'm like... It's still not... Not the same. It's not one-to-one functionality with what Discord expects to be no, there. you got to go hunting for that. I don't want to go hunting for it. I just want it right there in front of me. It's extra clicks also. Right. And I'm, I'm not... I don't appreciate that. I don't either. So, yeah, if, if I have to take an extension, and this is, this is one that is, it, it grates on me sometimes. If I have to take an extension, if I, if I can only pick one, that's the one I'm picking. Because... It makes my life easier. And I think that is exactly what GNOME is meant to do. It's Mm -hmm. meant to reduce distraction. It's meant to get you to focus on stuff. And I know that's why they got rid of the app indicators, because it is a distraction up there. Yeah, but it's a distraction I want. Like, I want that choice. (laughs) Yeah, but you end up in a situation where... Yes, it might be distracting just to see an icon up there or something like that. But you know what's more distracting is when I want to deal with Discord after I've clicked the X button and it's basically vanished from a GNOME desktop. Yeah. It's distracting to have to go hunt for how to deal with that. Right. And I mean, if I had a flow going before, man, digging into quick settings has done crushed that entire thing. Yeah. So... It's a balancing act, and they're doing a really good job. I will say that. Like yeah. this, I don't want this to come off as a, I don't like gnome or anything like I, that. I don't I, e- I, like I don't either. But I just want to get my gripes out of the way. They're pretty small. <laughs> there like, you go. They're, like they're really pretty small. Like they're first world problems. Uh, All very, right, gnome devs, we're gonna fluff you up in a minute. But right now, we gotta very, we gotta take out the trash. I think they're very <laughs> trivial. Really, seriously. Um, uh, you know, there's there's there really are some great highlights to pick from the gnome desktop. Uh, I think the uh, you know the overview stuff and the desktop overviews, being able to switch all those things with just Ooh, a few keys. I like that. Um, yeah. You know, like like it's very keyboard centric. You don't have to, but you can, and they're easy. They're easy to remember, like super key stuff. And oh, super scroll is my favorite. Super scroll on the mouse. To get through your workspaces? Oh, my, yes. You know, and, like, you know, the launcher. You can get to that really easy and, and launch all super. your things. Yeah. The super yeah. or the super R for the U launcher type stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, You can yeah. use that, too. Um, You know, all of that is, like, things that are highlights for me when I use GNOME. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I just... I don't even, I don't go digging for the applications and the menus. I don't do any of that. It just, it it makes, it makes finding applications super easy because I, I know what I want, right? Probably. Yeah. So I can just start typing it. It starts narrowing my search down for me and it's very accurate when it does that. Um, much more accurate than some of the other desktops, right? When you're finding, finding the thing. Yeah, um, because it really kind it of doesn't is, even yeah. have to be name based like it does context type search too so like um it'll it'll search within the the name you know what the function is sometimes mm-hmm. of things like i don't have to remember you know the exact naming on it and it'll it'll open up stuff so i i, I don't know it's there's a lot of attention to detail with that and and yeah. theming is another thing that, that has a lot of attention to detail Controversial. Be it's careful. Controversial, but it's super consistent, and so they like they give a good experience in that regard because it's something they focus on. I'm yeah. okay with that too. You know, for the most part, I I think I think over time, uh, I I've softened on that. I mean, mm-hmm. well, when they first came out with it, it was like it's like the Henry Ford approach. You can have any color car you want as long as it's as blue. As long as it's Edwaita. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it's the same thing, right? But Edwaita itself has come with some other options, which is good. And I yeah. think once once they did that, that really that helped a lot. Well, I okay. So what what I think what I think happened was I I softened my stance on the theming thing, mm-hmm. and 
I stopped caring what it looked like because that that was a switch. Um, I, I think it actually happened about the same the the same general time frame where I was switching from Linux being a tinker toy, Linux mm-hmm. being a well, I'm going to change this and I'm going to change this and I'm going to change this and I'm going to don't get me wrong, I like that, but yeah. And I, I I like that too. And there, there's I mean it's it's why we do weird things like run Gen two back here, right? But sure on top enough. of Gen two, what am I running? No. Gnome, mm-hmm. because I can tinker with it under the hood. I can I can optimize things and I can do all this weird funky stuff. But when it comes time to actually do stuff, this is where my stance has softened. When I open an application. My first priority is no longer, oh my God, the X, bo- the X button doesn't look quite right. Right. It's, it's what's inside the window. It's the audio I'm recording. It's the footage I'm editing. It's the web page I'm browsing. It's the book I'm reading. It's the chat I'm chatting. And that, I think, is what ended up happening, where I don't care that I can apply Adapta. And you know what? These The GNOME devs sneaky did it to me, and I don't know how I feel about it because their, yeah. their whole entire thing with GNOME 3 was to you know push out all that stuff, all the distraction, and let you focus. And they did it to me, and I don't know how I feel about it because now I can focus on my work. I can I I don't think about the theme and I don't think about the activities menu or the applications and what's going on on the desktop. I think about what's in front of me. I this is a revelation. I just had this right here. I know, right? Well, but like I said, like you you, you you really you really only had light though when they first came out with that, right? They were really hard enforcing it. Like that's all you get is that hurt a little. Yeah, it did. And then they came out with dark, and then like oh, that softens the blow a ton, right? Because now it's got and then and then they came out with accent colors, right? So like you use a boot, yeah. you can have some accent colors and stuff. Yeah, and and devs can do this weird thing where like. Uh, Libid Weta can like detect what's going on around right. it or whatever and change color depending on what's going right. on. And it's like, hold on, Libid Weta is actually okay. Things like your wallpaper and stuff can follow suit and, and so change from light to dark and stuff like that. So I Th- think this is what I'm waiting for. Come on, Gnome. Like, let's, this is let's it. This iterate is it. a little bit. Get, get me to the point where we're there where, now. Where, I feel like a little bit, right? We're, <laughs> It's gotten to a much more usable. You want to strip everything away? Okay, great, but le- leave some of the option and customization yeah. to me. Um, not not a, I don't maybe need as much, but I want it to be not stale. Um, yeah, all the time. And so I think they got there. I, I don't I don't need the novelty of a new theme every every time if the 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 little bits and bobs around the window or whatever. And and this is just old me talking, right? Right. Um. But if the little bits and bobs change every now and then, depending on what it's what you know, if my wallpaper changes in the background or whatever, and mm-hmm. you know, I'd wait to kind of adjust to bit, that. Yeah. And man, like I, I think smooth. that's yeah, and and I think that's what Windows has done. I think that's what yeah. Mac OS has done with a lot of their blur and stuff like that. So I, I think that that is enough to to sate me, and I'll probably never think about it ever again. And then I can just do exactly what original GNOME three wanted me to do, and focus yep yep i agree with that and so like um it's a ton more simplified from days of old but they brought enough back to keep the interest i think is where i'm at and so i'm good with that yep yeah and and i think uh with 45 they did that whole break all the extensions and fix all the extensions thing and i I really do hope that there is um there's better continuity there because i i know that Every version of GNOME, and it, and and a lot of times it really was as simple as changing a, a forty one to a forty two, and then the extension would behave properly. Right. You know, if if we can get away from that and get closer to, uh, you know, is it is it compatible underneath? And if it is, let it run, or give me the option to just yeah, say maybe you can have multiple it. versions that it's available for. And that'd be, that'd that'd, be cool. That'd be kind of cool, right? Yeah. So no, I hope these changes are for the better. And that's what I'm saying. I think for the most part they have made like they they 
they threw everything out and started over and that was rough and so now there's i think i think these changes that we're seeing are are really starting yeah. to bring some of that quality of life stuff back they're only bringing back what they know they can maintain that is a super important thing uh from a developer standpoint right i mean if you bring in things that you're just that that is going to get stale and break then gnome is going to get a bad reputation but right. You know, on the flip side, you have all these people that are, well, I can't customize it. You're going to get a bad reputation from that as well. But I'd rather them have a bad reputation for being, you know, uncustomizable than have a bad reputation for it being broken. Right, right, right. Well, uh, and so, like, I will say when, when they were they were getting rid of everything, that, that just, it soured a lot of people, including myself. And I feel like that's what solidified my choice in picking yeah. something yeah. that was cute right i mean i'd already kind of gone that way but like it, it just it just made it more solid and yeah. so then i just like no i didn't give up on it right because i'm still here and there every now and then but i am not as interested in it and i think that's the thing even though it has a lot to offer and that's unfortunate i agree i mean i, I ended up on the the cinnamon train and mm -hmm. i'm yep, still yep. on i'm still on that track i mean and, and this happened you know, right around the GNOME 3 Switch. Right. And I don't think I ever really left it, uh, except for to explore. And now that I'm exploring since GNOME 40, it is enticing me back. And, it's you know, I, 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 get, I get in trouble in the chat of Linux Saloon every now and then because I, I do talk so highly of GNOME. <laughs> poor, poor Nate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I go harass him a lot. But, I mean... That's that's something that um that that I think I, I enjoy now. I, I really do enjoy the feel of GNOME now and I, I'm I'm really excited to see how it's gonna improve over the next few years. Yeah, uh, and there's definitely some takeaways that I like too. So I mean overall I would say I don't dislike it and I can operate very well there. Um there's a lot of lot of things I like. Probably not my, gonna be my primary, but just the same. I'm not dissatisfied. If some, if that yeah. was all there was, somebody dropped that down in front of me, I could call myself quite comfortable with it, you know, and I, I'd be okay. Yeah. To to follow up on that, you know, I mean, if if you had to pick one, mm -hmm. if you had to say, as far as adoption goes, and what what is being used on the default desktops, there is a Linux desktop, and like it or not. Yeah, I think that's gnome. I, I, you're you're not wrong. It's more prevalent. Yeah, definitely more I, prevalent. I, I know we it, have our preferences. I know that there are you know things that we would like to happen, but if we're gonna sit here and say there is a gnome de or there is a Linux desktop, it's that one. And it's kind of been that way for a while. And and I think um, it it, it is because it's in the forefront for definitely the major ones. Definitely. Well, you go back to history, and, and this is what I was saying about XFCE, and it, it happened. We'll cover it in the history of KDE when we do that one, but the fact that XFCE and KDE decided to base their mm. desktops on, you know, fully or semi-proprietary software, right? that is... Left a lot of sting. Yeah, it, it is the it, it was the very first and I think the most important thing that GNOME got right. Yep. They went a hundred percent fully open source out of the gate. And you know, well, they strayed as far as Richard Stallman was concerned, but they did not stray from using free and open source software. That's more about just distributor's choice than it is um gnome in a way though too right it just they got they got fault for for promoting it yeah but the underpinnings of gnome was free and open source yep. software and i think that was that was one of if the if if not the most important decision mm -hmm. that uh miguel de casa and, and gnome as a whole made to cement i mean and it was red hat that put him on the map to cement gnome's yeah. legacy as the Linux desktop. And there have been times when, especially around GNOME 3, uh, that that it was questionable whether GNOME was on top of the heap anymore or not. 
and KDE has in many in many points in history given it a run for its money. They have, and they're they're really close. I gotta believe. I mean, they can't be. I don't think they're too far behind. But but you're right, and I think it's not just the people that were using it and the adoption in the places that it got used. It's also the developers. So the developers chose to to contribute to free and open source things just as much. And yeah. because it's, it sees so much work, you know, that helps make the experience better um, for people. And, you know, that in turn leads to greater adoption as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's a few things that, that make it add up to be the one you see the most of. And, um, you know, obviously there's companies that are, that are paying developers to go work on these things. Um, you know, they're not paying GNOME directly, but they're paying the developers to go work on it, you know, for their own purposes. And that's, you know, fine. Pay your developers, okay? Although they did get a huge influx of uh, cash here recently. It's like a million dollars or something, right? That's, that's a pretty good chunk of change. Yes, it is. And before the show, we were talking about how much history did not make it into That's the show. I mean, seriously, <laughs> like I, I really think with all the history that we cut out of the oh show, out of, out of the, out of the uh, history episode or the history section, um, we probably could have made an entire another double the show, double the show. So, yeah, yeah. Seriously, uh, just with the amount of stuff that did not make it in uh, to the to the show. It, it, Mind, mind blowing, yep, man. Pretty much, couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. And I thought it was going to be an easy one. <laughs> so, I, I, no. You know, to wrap up, how did it go for me? Um, it went okay. Um, but I'm ready to move on. Okay. All right. Well, on my end, it went so exceedingly well that it's hard for me to make the case to go back to cinnamon okay. and. That's hard for me to say, actually. Um, and, and I mean, we, we were coming off the, we were just coming out the previous episode about how much snaps I'm yeah. indifferent to them now because, you know, my, my only real actual, actual gripe was that they were slow, but that, that's really not much of the case anymore. You know, we, we've kind of explained away the proprietariness of it. Mm hmm. So, you know, I still get the same Ubuntu base. I, and if I wanted to, I could eradicate snaps and keep them away using Linux Mint's... Yeah, tools. Yeah. Uh, right. So it's really hard. And, you know, with the Wayland adoption... I, mm, there, there, there's the one. Like, we just talked about that a couple episodes, too, right? That's the thing, because I have this framework laptop that has a high DPI screen, and I hook it up to a monitor right here that is not high DPI. And so you have this mixed DPI situation that... Wayland is just more capable with, and GNOME supports that. GNOME 45 specifically supports that better than any version of GNOME before and right. better than any other desktop in existence right now. And so the, the case for leaving it is becoming exceedingly hard because of the hardware that I have. Yeah. And, you know, I, I make it not a very big I'm point. I'm not disputing that, right? Like, I, I feel no. like the Wayland thing is a huge deal. And Gnome, Gnome has been just a step above everybody else in, in that regard and in the way they, they're, they're, they're handling that and the yeah. functionality that's coming out of it. And it's nice to see. And, I, and in a way, I do want to promote that. I'm not going to lie. I feel like that's a good experience. Well, KDE is so but, close, but, man. But, like, Plasma 6 is right yeah. around the corner, and that's yep. uh, also equally focused on, you know, the same sort of mentality in delivering Wayland and I'm, having a good experience. So I'm I really, really am, interested, really interested. I'm excited to see where, where Plasma is going to go with Plasma 6 and with their Wayland adoption, and is it going to be a contender? Because, my God, do I love Blur. But I'm also equally excited to see because 21.3, Linux Mint 21.3 mm -hmm. uh, is bringing in uh, rudimentary uh, testing Wayland yeah, support for Wayland. Yeah. on Cinnamon. And I mean, it may not be Linux Mint 22, maybe Linux Mint 23, where we see, you know, real robust Wayland support. You know, here in a couple of years, man, you may hear me talking about how, well, I'm just back on Mint again because, you know, they've already checked all the boxes. Now they check the Wayland box, too. Right around the corner, 
to get you excited here, LX Cute's coming, like with the oh. Wayland version as well. I was gonna ask. And uh the, like the, the the big the big showstopper is kind of the weird like the, the panel doesn't work quite right right now. Right. Okay. And uh that's pretty important. It's it's kind of a key feature. <laughs> kinda. Kinda. <laughs> yeah, kinda. You, know, you, you can gotta, work you without have it. Your applications. You can work without it if you do some other things. But um you know that's that's the biggie. That's the biggie yeah. hold up. And I I believe I mean they're working on it. So I mean I, I think something will happen. I think you know Potentially some some further KDE frameworks that get used are are going to help, um, you know, LXQ. So I'm I'm excited yeah. to see what happens. I think they're yeah. they're like Cinnamon, you know, Cinnamon's probably got a few few bugs right now because they just started working on on things. So I think you know, experience different bugs, but you know, experience is the same. Where just a yeah. little minor things are broken, and right around the corner. It'll be it'll be whaling time for those as well. Anyway, you can catch all the links at linuxuserspace.show or lus.sh. Just that's oh, yeah. it for short. Like lus.sh. So 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 much less typing now. Yep. Leo loves email. I I just don't, I don't know how much he gushes over email. He loves email. I like I like email. I, I mm-hmm. he's it's okay. It's fine. It's a great communication platform. Um <laughs> it's not my favorite, but that's fine. So you want to hit us up in an it's email? It's static, man. I can always look it up. You want to hit us up in an email at contact at linuxuserspace.show, or there is a contact form on linuxuserspace.show yeah. slash contact or lus.sh slash contact. And That's right. it, it will send off the you know the message in the form of an email. So Leo Leo feels happy. He loves email. That's true. That's true. And and if you put your actual email address in there, oh, if reply. I respond to it, yeah. yeah, yeah, it'll get to your email. Otherwise, I'll be forced. This is not a hack. I'll be forced to talk about it on the show. So oh, we'll you know. probably do that anyway. All right. That brings us into next time, Leo. Uh, Uh-oh. Next time? topics i mean that's what that's what we're doing as usual but uh we haven't until right now decided what the next history is but i feel like we can't get off this train <sighs> no no we got to finish the desktop thing we got to do the desktop we are. I don't... at least at least the early days right i mean the ones that came about about all the same time and uh, i think we're right there on the cusp of that and and there is there was XFCE. There was that w- that was it seemed to me to be you know the first right based off CDE. Off then CDE. there was that then there was uh which one was it KDE. <gasps> mm. 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 We sort of skipped right. over that. We did skip over that. Little, we skipped over it on purpose though. Kinda. We're we're trying to time it right. We're and I think to we're end- there. I think we're there think the time is well, now. Well, there, there's a bit of another announcement in this area that, that might help nestle that in the exact right time to maybe, we'll see how that goes, but maybe beta will, uh, and then we hit Gnome, obviously. Yeah, because they just had a release, nice release, 45, yep. and it was a good release, and so we it tested that. It is a that. good release, man. The solid. workspace thing up in the corner. Oh, I like that. so good. I man, do. I like it. So um, it, it leaves us with the one, right? We got to do the KDE. We got to do plasma. We got to do KDE and and everything that led up to plasma and beyond. And so the beyond is now. The beyond is here. They've released a beta now. Ah, <sighs> it's beyond alpha. It's beyond alpha and here we are. Plasma 6 beta. So what you're saying is by the time we come out with the KDE Plasma 6, Plasma, whatever, history, because it's both, right? It's KDE and KDE, pl- so it's weird, and we'll We'll, we'll, we'll talk it. about it, yeah. But um, there will be a almost official, regular, actual, usable, release-stable version, almost, not quite, but... Probably like a release candidate, you know, beta, beyond, whatever that, whatever that is, but not quite released. Yeah, um, so we'll I, we'll need yeah. something like a Gen two testing to be able to access it, right? We, we could do that, or like, I mean, I think I feel like um, there's obviously KDE Neon. 
is another option. Okay, true. And we can, can you, do can, that. So you just hop on like the beta with a KDE Neon or something? You can. Um, okay. It's available. Hey, that's, um, wow, so it's, that's so easy. That, that's a good thing. Or KOS, right? We talked about K, oh, KOS. Obviously. I, yeah, I we really, did the history. We totally did. We, talk, we talked about how focused they are on KDE and KDE applications. That's their and, thing. And th- that yeah. is it. And uh, I wouldn't mind trying that either. That's not so bad. Yeah. And so I feel yeah, like so, either- So much so, they, they actually, they don't even bundle in. Like, they don't even think they offer GTK and all of that stuff, right? Like, they, there's a pretty hard line. They draw the line. They do, and so you've got to use their user repository. Remember, yeah, le- unless and, you bust out the flat packs or something. Flat packs you, or the user repository. They have some other things that aren't KDE in there, right? Um, right. So you okay. could do totally yeah. do that. Um, okay. And so okay. I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think either of those two are probably pretty great options. I know there's there's ISOs for both that that'll land you into the place where you want to be um, to do the do testing. Obviously not Appreciate for production, that. but hey, we're testing this for the show. For we're doing this for production. you, folks. Yeah, I'm producing a podcast, so mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. for somebody's production, okay? It's, it's a production. Yeah. <laughs> Subpar, but it's there, man. So I think me personally, I'm going to pick one of those two probably and, and just go with that. And, and yeah. that'll be better to be the way I test it. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to leave it. Uh, we're going to leave it up in the air for a little bit and try to maybe figure that out. I don't know, man. Can can I can I make can I get the Gen two to behave the way? Well, I, I mean, I guess that's another option. There is a way to get Plasma six stuff uh, installed on on the Gen two as well. It's a whole lot of use flags, man. But okay, I think I can do it. But uh, you know, so that's an option as well. Um, okay, I'm not sure that's the path I'm going to go because I'm probably going to pick an easier path. You're cause... already on the plasma testing, so you're well, probably uh, going to just get it. I'm on the plasma five testing though, so like oh. Yeah, so okay. it's not really testing. It's just a little in advance of what what you see in stable. Okay, okay, um, okay. For some days. I still don't know Gen 2 well enough. I'll figure it out one of these days. Uh, Joshua will come on the stream again <laughs> and explain it all to us yet again, but that's cool. I feel smarter every time. I Seriously. That's why we need everybody else to come on the stream and just watch me do the bad commands and uh, bork the system, man. That's, uh, I've done it more than once. It is pretty funny when I do do it. That but is. we bring it back, so that's cool. We do resurrect it. We haven't killed it yet. We have and not. And I'm, I'm very impressed that is, by this. That's we, resilient. Yeah. We got to do we gotta do network manager. That's, that's the last thing. Once that's I get network easy. manager on there. I feel like that was easy. It, well, yeah. I... I I agree. It looks easy, but we're this me we're talking about here. We we'll could, guide you through uh, that, Leo. Don't worry. Okay, I'm gonna typo it on purpose. Maybe well, possibly. You might do that. It could happen. We'll see how it goes. But the other thing about next time is it's going to be a little further in time than a little next extended. time. So yeah, yeah, because. In theory, the next episode would traditionally release on actual Christmas Day. And since that's a little busy time and probably viewership would be down just a little bit, we're going to extend the holiday season and wish everybody a a great holiday. And we're going to be into the next year. We're going to be. Yeah. We're going to be, you know, next year when we release the next episode. So we're going to skip a two weeks and then we'll be back into the studio and we'll we'll get you a, a new episode in the new year. Yeah. So this is your gift. Go li- listen to the gnome history again on Christmas hey, Day. Gnomes and bring are everybody really, else in. Gnomes are integral in into Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. So, so throw away your elf on a shelf. It's gnome on a shelf. You you take a little USB you, Bluetooth speaker. You didn't know that already? Yeah, no. Yeah, you you put the you put the speaker on the shelf and then you play the gnome history episode and then there's a gnome on a shelf. Yeah. Obviously that's that's the way to attack it. That's how you do it. It works for me, whatever. Yeah. So hang tight. We'll be back in your ears soon enough after you hear this episode anyway. And um yeah, th- this this gives you plenty of time to sign up for Lemmy, to join the conversation there, to join the Discord, to join the Patreon, to join all the stuff and have a lot of have a lot of conversation so that we can bring that to the show. Yeah. 
yeah, hope, hopefully, you know, you get some time with your family and you get some time with uh, your your laptop or your desktop and get it right in front of. You got to you know, get something for Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tweak your fresh, new, just unwrapped Steam Deck. Steam Deck? Ra- OLED? Raspberry Pi 5? Like, there's some yeah. exciting stuff to go test. And uh, I think that's what the little forum section of Lemmy's going to have to be used for, is all of the cool tech gifts that you yeah, got. Yeah, let us know what you got for Christmas or, you know, whatever holiday you celebrate. The, it, the forum. It, your gift. Yeah, throw, throw them in there. Let us know what you got for gifts. Yeah, yeah we've, we've got a forum. You didn't know this? Yeah, we have a forum. It's on Lemmy. Go check it out. Join it the Lemmy it, thing and then post. It says so. They're, they're, you talk about whatever you want to in the forum. You just, you just bring it in. Yeah, any tech. Like, even if you want to talk about some of those proprietary things, that's fine, too. I'll approve it. It's it belongs maybe, there. Maybe you could at least stretch it to like <laughs> Mac OS or you know, you're running Asahi on a on a oh, Mac or man. something. That'd be all right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be you're cool getting da- you're dangerous territory. It's danger, Will Robinson. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, Leo. Where can we find you on the interwebs? Oh, you can always find me at the old Mastodon. I I find myself on there all the time. I now, do too. recently. Yep. And a mm, whole lot more action over there than anywhere else that i've ever seen so you can find me at leo chavez at mastodon.social um i still periodically hop on the old tweeters uh you can find me at leo chavez there as well yeah i'm less and less on 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 x um yeah but i'm I'm still there i I catch a couple things for sure so i'm at casey to be easy there but i'm also at casey to be easy at mastodon.social on mastodon which is my preferred place yeah so if you're trying to give us feedback, you can do it that way directly as well. At Linux user space. Exactly. The show is at user at uh, yeah. What what Dan said. I don't know what I said. He doesn't know, but that's okay. We're at Liz- Linux user space. <laughs> yeah, you got me going too. Jeez, see what you at, did at lizard user space. <laughs> the, 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 the lizard space. That's where we're at. Of course it is. So that means we're a Sousa podcast now. Okay, got it. Got All it. All right. No, that's a gecko. Uh, <laughs> it's a lizard, right? That's not a lizard. I is guess it same is. Thing? I don't know. Someone's gonna. Someone's gonna send us hate mail. Here we go. Hey, come back in not two weeks, but a few more weeks than that, and uh, join us uh, for the Linux user space and the lizard user space and the, 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 all the space. We're just gonna be. I'm gonna do lizard scales on the on the logo, man. We're gonna be but, out of space. Yeah. Until then, happy holidays. Yes, enjoy. Yeah, and that's one thing that that got cut from the history was that um, we only really talked about cinnamon and mate, right? Because those are the those are the direct right offshoots of the the gnome switch, and we didn't talk about what LXDE slash LXQT right. did during that time. We didn't talk about the elementary offshoot, um, and and we didn't talk about. Uh, oh, there was one more. Uh, we didn't talk about another one. Budgie. Um, uh, but, but Budgie's not really an offshoot, but they use a lot of the toolkits and stuff. They do. So, and but the reasoning for it to exist was because people were, you know, not, yeah. not, you know, not, not willing to adopt, right? So, yeah. Even exactly. though it's so, not, you know, a direct descendant, it's uh, the, the reason is the same. It had the performance while also still having, you know, the some of the visual effects that Cinnamon right, and right, other, right. others had, but the performance was there on Budgie, and that's where you didn't get that anywhere else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, we had to cut uh, a lot of that. Sadly. And sadly. Except, yeah. Except we sadly. just talked about it all, so there you go. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs>